On August 10, 2001, Space Shuttle Discovery launched mission STS-105 to the International Space Station. Start. Three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, carrying the third crew of astronaut presidents to the International Space Station. Booster Discovery roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete and Discovery is now in a heads down, wings level position carrying the next resident crew to the International Space Station. seconds into the flight and Discovery's three main engines are beginning to throttle back to 74% of rated thrust as Discovery passes through maximum aerodynamic pressure. Discovery's three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle, 104% of rated thrust. Discovery is now traveling more than 1,300 miles per hour, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center about seven miles at an altitude of 12 miles. Data here in the flight control room indicates that all three main engines, the auxiliary power units and fuel cells are continuing to perform well. One minute and 34 seconds into the flight with seven minutes of powered flight remaining, standing by for the next major event, which will be the burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. and the booster officer confirms, confirms a good separation of the solid rocket boosters. The main purpose of STS-105 was the rotation of the International Space Station Expedition Crew and the delivery of supplies utilizing the Italian-built multi-purpose logistics module, the MPLM, known as Leonardo, on its second flight. On August 12th, Discovery slowly approached and docked with the ISS. Here you can actually see the real space station in the overhead window uh, coming down in a very nice controlled uh, fashion. And here's the last few seconds right prior to uh, impact. First thing Doc's looking for is the uh, contact and the capture light. You'll see him check the panel down there and then uh, he was very happy. Frank was down on the mid deck and he just couldn't wait to get over to his new home. He's saying, come on y'all, let's go, hurry up. <laughs> So uh, Doc went in there and opened uh, our hatch, and on the other side of the hatch was the uh, Increment 2 Commander, uh, Yuri Yusachev, who you've heard mentioned uh, many times tonight. And Yuri was very, very happy to see us, uh, as you'll see. Gives uh, the formal handshake and then a uh, big hug, and uh, everybody was uh, very happy to see each other. After docking, the crew used both the shuttle and station's cannon arms to remove Leonardo from the shuttle cargo bay and berth it to the Nadir port on Unity. Once berthed, 
the crew entered the module and began unloading thousands of pounds of supplies for the station. Well, as Pat said, um, it's time now to, to unload the MPLM. And uh, we, were, we had all of our transfer lists. Uh, Dave Parrish uh, was here, got an award for helping us put all that together. But uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. It's time to really take the boxes out. So we started with that technique, which was uh, one man with three boxes and realized in space you don't have to do it that way. And uh, found that the bucket brigade uh, was not only more efficient, but a lot more fun. And uh, Doc was calling balls and strikes as we passed this uh, back to Pat. And uh, utilized Jim Boss's uh, concept of how to do this, which was uh, really the idea being temp stow it all, get it on the right side of the hatch, and then um, put it in its proper place, which worked out great. Uh, Yuri Yusuchev did say to me after I was crowing about how quickly we had gotten the MPLM unloaded, he said, Dan, that's, that's very nice, but I want to remind you that it's easier to destroy than to create. <laughs> He was right. It's a lot harder to put all those uh, boxes back where they belong to come back uh, home. And this was our first shot. And it, the ground wasn't happy with that, so we had to <laughs> organize it a little bit better. STS-105 called for two spacewalks to help install the Materials International Space Station Experiment, or the MISSE, which was a container that would be outside the ISS, which would test the effects of radiation on materials and perform other services. Doc is flying the arm. Uh, Pat and I are out there coordinating together. CJ has uh, got the whole choreography uh, mapped and planned out and is guiding a step by guiding a step by. And uh, it's that kind of teamwork that in the end uh, really creates uh, a successful spacewalk. And uh, there's also some uh, things that happen on the fly as uh, the position of the servicer wasn't exactly what we modeled, but um, we were able to uh, compensate for that and get it uh, connected uh, right on time. As uh, Pat mentioned during the slides, we also had uh, a couple suitcases of materials that we were bringing outside to remain out there and be exposed to space and then uh, be brought home on a future mission. Here's Doc flying us. Uh, the experience of being flown on the arm is is a really interesting one. As you uh, As you're out there, you get far away from all structure on this arm and then you hear Doc tell you to fasten your seatbelt, kind of looking around for that seatbelt a little bit. But um, again, the, the communication back and forth uh, in, a, in many different axes of orientation uh, is critically important. We worked a lot on that and got a lot of help uh, from our trainers on the ground too. Uh, there's uh, Pat saying hi from uh, high up above Discovery. The spacewalkers also performed other tasks outside the station in over 12 hours of total time outside. Before departing, the Expedition 2 crew handed off control to the station to the Expedition 3 crew, consisting of Frank Kolbertson, Vladimir Dusharov, and Mikhail Tayurin. During their four-month stay, the crew saw the orbital complex expand and research work grow. The Expedition 3 crew returned home on mission STS-108. Discovery undocked from the station on August 20th with the Expedition 2 crew aboard, leaving Expedition 3 at the station. Later that day, the SimpleSat test satellite was ejected from the GAS canister in the cargo bay. Two days later, Discovery performed its deorbit burn 
and landed at Kennedy Space Center on runway 15. The Expedition 2 crew of Yusachov, Voss, and Helms had been in space for 167 days. After landing, Discovery was taken out of service for structural inspections. And we went from 17 thousand miles an hour to land uh, about 2,000 feet down the runway at 200 knots at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, bring it into our mission. The chute there slows us down. Uh, it's really effective. You can really feel that come out. It also helps cushion the nose as it comes down. That comes down with a pretty big bang. And we're firmly on the ground, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, our administrator, uh, Dan Golden, meet us there. Uh, shuttle crew is real excited, wanted to go take a quick look at Discovery, our ride uh, to space and, and our home for 12 days. The same day Discovery landed back on Earth, Progress M16, which had been docked to the aft port of Svezda, undocked to make way for Progress M45. It was deorbited on the same day it undocked, burning up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. While the new crew got settled in, they waited for the next addition for the station, the PIRS.